Good morning. Welcome to the place. If you'll stand, where is everybody this morning? Where are they? Important <laughs> people are here. If anybody that's here is supposed to be here, right? That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to the place. If this is your first time, we welcome you. If you're regular here, you're always welcome. So, all right, here we go. everybody how's everybody doing good it's wonderful to see every one of you here at the place I don't know why you guys are sitting down I mean you know we're about to get back up it's that sit down and jump I mean that's fine whatever you guys want to do well you know we say here at the place that all blessings flow through relationship so let's get up and be a blessing to everybody
All right. Good morning, everybody. Well, the church of the week that we have this week is going to be Snow Hill Baptist Church in Tuttle with Pastor uh, Dr. Todd Littleton. Oh, nope. I got the wrong name. Sorry. Anthony Lester is his name. Uh, if you're watching this, Pastor Anthony, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, that, that was, uh, I was given the wrong information. Sorry. So, uh, we're praying for, praying for Pastor Anthony Lester th today, and they are praying that they remain faithful witnesses in all that they do. Amen. We can all pray for that, right? Yeah. So, let's pray for these guys. Lord, we thank you right now for Snow Hill Baptist Church. We thank you, Lord, for what they are doing and the impact that they are having on their community. Lord, we pray right now that you will bless them with boldness, that you will bless them with your faithfulness. God, give them your grace to be able to be witnesses in everything that they do. That in every single place that they go to, Lord, that they would be able to proclaim your name with grace, with love, and with boldness. We praise you so much for what you're doing in this church. And we thank you, Lord, that you are blessing them abundantly in all that they do. We praise you and we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. How's everybody? You want to come up? Okay. Grab that microphone right there. Awesome. Well, Pastor Gary and Miss Shirley are out of town. They're actually in California this morning. Uh, he's already, uh, uh, he, he honestly left us alone when we were on our vacation. <laughs> texted me once or twice, just asked me a question. No big deal. And so, uh, but anyway, uh, so he texted us when we got home, like, Friday. Uh, he was like, you up? Which I'm always up late. And he was, he, he's like, you up? LOL. He laughed. So, but anyway, but they miss you guys, and, uh, but they're going to be home this week sometime, uh, I think the end of the week. And so I'll be doing Wednesday night, but uh, yeah. You have something for us this morning? Um, do you first? You want me to go first? Yes. Okay, well, uh, this is just, that, that's the other thing. Um, we do still <laughs> need some nursery help, and so if you're interested in, in helping in the nursery, and this is uh, the toddler nursery yes. is what we need help in, right? But if you Zip would both. prefer to work in the babies, maybe someone in the babies would be willing to switch okay. with you. Okay, there you go. Over so we can switch it up. Yes, so talk to Jennifer or Rebecca. I know that Rebecca do. and, and uh, little, little Lily was not feeling well this morning, so they're home. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we, we could use some help. Yes. And then if you're uh, new with this or... Uh, or maybe you're just not familiar, uh, here in just a minute we're going to take up the offering. And uh, in the seat in front of you are little offering, or, or, well, you have the offering envelopes, but you also have a prayer card. So if you're new with us and you haven't uh, given us your name and stuff like that, you could write that down. But I think everybody, and I know most everybody here, uh, uh, even though I'm new. <laughs> thank you. Although Brother Roy t says that I'm, I've been used, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I've been out of the package now. So. Uh, but anyway, uh, so on the back of that uh, card, though, if you have a prayer request, please pr write that down on there. Throw the date on there and your name, because uh, sometimes we get the, just get a prayer request and you go, I don't know who this is. We're just, you know, we pray for it uh, and everything, but right, we'd love right. to know. And sometimes I, I like to follow up. And whenever I get somebody's prayer request, if I pray for them, I, I literally text them. I'm like, hey, I'm praying over your need today. I just want to let you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just drop that in the offering here in just a moment. And yeah. that is really all we ask you to do. So you have something inspirational for us today? Well, I do. Always. Um, Okay. But first, I wanted to say I no, have you just got to do that. knowledge of multiple people's prayer requests um, that I don't think they necessarily would like shared right. because they haven't shared it in that way. But I'm sure you guys do too. So, um, you know, just be sure to remember them this week and be lifting them up. And um, there's just a lot going on um, in our body, and yeah. I'm sure you know across our area as well. Um, but my my um, scripture that I had thought of this morning was um, Revelation 12, 11, that says they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Um, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Um, so I guess I was just thinking about how by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony, um, we're going to be able to triumph over Satan. So just a word to think on this week. So, Amen. Yeah. That's good stuff. Well, if we can have our ushers uh, step forward this morning, we will receive our Sunday morning tithes and offering. Thank you for giving. It uh, helps us to, we've already had to, like, fix a couple of air conditioners this summer, and, and uh, we work on the vans and different things like that, so appreciate that. But let's pray this morning and offer our offering, offerings to God. Lord, thank you for what you've done in our lives. Thank you, God, that you take care of all of our needs and so many of our wants. 
And we just want to give back to you, Father. You, you have given us that privilege to partner with you, not only to keep the lights on in this building, but God also to bless uh, missionaries and ministers around the world through this church. And we just thank you for what you've done. Help us to be faithful witnesses or faithful uh, stewards of what you've given to us. And uh, we just praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. ushers and prayer partners or go on if prayer partners if you will just make it <laughs> prayer partners if you will come and if you guys need prayer for anything one of these guys up here will be happy to pray with you Because you 
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time and sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you had me in your side so you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time. I Thank you, Jesus. 
just thank you, Lord, for this day. We know that the blood has power. It will always have power and always has. For God, there are many of us standing here today that can testify that the blood has power. God, I just thank you, Lord, for this service. Lord, I know that there is a spirit of heaviness on some today that is present. And Lord, we just pray that you would lift that in the name of Jesus. And Lord, for those that are hurting and broken and bruised and battered, God, we bring them to you in the name of Jesus because we need you, God, and we can't make it without you. So, Father, I just pray that you would have your way in this service. I pray that you would anoint our ears to hear what you have to say to us as individually and as a church. And, Jesus, we pray that above all, that you would be magnified and lifted up. May every path, God, that you lay before us, Lord, may it always allow us to look at the cross ahead, forgetting that that's behind and looking forward to the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus and for the heaven that waits ahead of us. And Jesus, we just praise you and we thank you. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. good to be back with everybody today. We were gone last week. We went up to Colorado where it was a little cooler. I think we might have brought a little bit of the weather back because it's been like 90s instead of 100 and 101 or whatever, but uh, you're welcome for that. So anyway, I just we, we lassoed that weather and brought it back down, but so super dry up there. It's like taking me a few days to get like my sinuses uh, back in, in working order. Uh, super dry up there, but I don't know. I, I, I kind of welcome the humidity back. Has anybody ever flown, though, like to South America, Central America, something like that, and they open that door to let us off the plane, and that, that oppressive like humidity just rolls in? Uh, good times, good times. So anyway, we're glad to be back. Uh, we did, I did get to listen in uh, as we were traveling home Thursday. Jennifer was like, have you listened to the Sunday school class? I said, no, I haven't. She was like, it was amazing. And so I listened in on that one, and then I listened in uh, Friday when I came to work uh, to get ready for today. I listened to Brother Gary's message because I thought, I don't want to preach what he preached. <laughs> and so, uh, just, but I wanted to also hear what, he, what God did, and, and it looked like an amazing, amazing day, amazing service. So thank you for that. And uh, so anyway, 
but we're, I appreciate uh, Pastor Gary, like, you know, sometimes if you ever work for somebody that makes you feel like dirt, even though they tell you you can take time off, when you actually take the time off, they make you feel like dirt about it, anybody? Yeah, a few of us, and uh, Brother Gary did not do that, so I appreciated that, so, but he, he of course, he said, I'm going to be leaving as soon as Sunday's over, and he said, you've got the rest of the week, so, but anyway, we're glad to be back, so. I want to talk this morning, my, my title is to Reboot, Recalibrate, and Renovate. And I noticed last week, Brother Gary had three words that were his titles. And so uh, I thought, uh, I didn't copy him on intentionally, but uh, it, in, any, good, any good out of all this is the Holy Spirit anyway. You realize that? Okay. It's his fault. It's not ours. So, not fault, you know what I'm saying, but it's his responsibility. If it's good, it's the Holy Spirit. If it's bad, it's Brent, okay? So... Chew, chew, up, uh, chew it up and spit out the sticks and the, and the rocks and stuff, okay? Uh, but as we were driving back from Colorado on, on Thursday, like I said, I got to listen in, and God dropped this into my heart. And, and, and the, the first thing that he dropped in was just reboot, like the, the, a hard reset. And, you know, something we have to do to electronics all the time. If you have a computer, if you have an I, you know, any type of smartphone, uh, any type of tablet, every now and again, it's just not working. You're, you know, uh, you're just, you're, you're, I'm, it's not listening to me. It's not responding to my touch. And you have to do a hard reset. Now, that's not just turning it off and on necessarily. Like an uh, iPhone, that if you have an older iPhone with an actual button, like a home button, you would hold the home button down and the lock screen button down until it goes off and comes back on. You see the Apple logo. With a newer iPhone, what you do, and this is, this is just for free this morning, okay? I'll be a little IT for you this morning. Uh, you hit up, down on volume, up, down super quick, and then you hold the, the lock screen. And what it does is and you keep holding it until it shuts off, and then you see the Apple logo come back on. But what this does for you is uh, it's a hard reset. It'll make your device work better. It kind of resets all your apps. And, and uh, one thing that us older folks do have a problem with uh, is having too many apps open in the background. And so, like, if, uh, if you ever hand your, your phone to a student, they're going to, like, immediately, you know, they're, they're going to immediately be like, okay, why do you have all this stuff that's open right now? Why are you doing this, right? And uh, they, my, my daughter likes to make fun of me uh, sometimes w uh, when that. But, you know, you forget that you open those things. And even if you do it every day, you get to the end of the day, you're like, wow, I had, like, 17 things that I did on my phone today. So, uh, but, but uh, talk about us needing to reboot as Christ followers uh, because we need to do maintenance on ourselves and our walk with Jesus. And so let's talk about reboot. And the first thing is that God has placed in us a need to stop and rest, right? I mean, it is, it is hardwired into our, our, our rhythms, right? They call it the circadian rhythm about how your sleep and wake cycles and things like that. So every night we go to sleep, right? Praise Jesus. I love sleep, man. But here's the thing, though. I hate going to bed and I hate getting up. Why, you know? And so, but as I've gotten older, I've realized this will be here tomorrow. Whatever I've been working on, whatever I was watching or whatever, it'll be here tomorrow. And so, uh, but every night we rest. Every week we get a, a, a day of rest, Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse 8. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And, and here's this. I, I found that if I refer to the owner's manual, the Bible, that God has given us, you know, that my weeks go better. Uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 27, Jesus says to them, he said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. You know, a lot of people want to be like, oh, we're, we're serving, you know, you're serving God on the Sabbath or whatever. Well, the Sabbath was, was supposed to be a rest for us as well. It was supposed to where we could, de now, Sunday's not my Sabbath. I'll just let you know that right now. Uh, Monday's my Sabbath. And I will, I, tonight, I will stay up late and I will watch movies and just and, and maybe drink a Coca-Cola I'm, I'm down to like maybe one every couple of days now, which is pretty good for Brent. And, uh, but I'll watch movies, and then I will sleep in tomorrow. And it'll be a glorious, beautiful sleep in. Jennifer works from home on Mondays, but she will take her computer. I'll help her move her computer into the dining room. And, I, and we just shut the doors, and, she, and I have a little sleep mask that I put on when the sun starts to come up. And I will sleep as late as I possibly can. Uh, but I have found that I get more done working one day less a week than if I used all seven days for work. You know, and it's, a lot of you guys know the, the uh, uh, Mr. Kathy, who was the uh, founder of Chick-fil-A. When he first started out, uh, he prayed about it, and he, and he felt like God wanted him to, one, close down his business on Sunday, for one, to close the business, but two, to give his employees a chance to go to church. And, and God told him, I will make your business the most prosperous business. Well, it is, it is, if it's not the top, it was at one point, but it is definitely in the top one or two or three businesses, like fast food restaurants in all of the world, you know, and just keeps growing and keeps growing. 
And I even like the fact that, like, uh, whenever, I don't know if you've ever known a, a Chick-fil-A franchisee, but they can't really own more than one store because they have to work so many hours in that store. You know, he wanted them to be very hands-on in that place. And, and so, uh, uh, but they're, you know, they're off on Sundays. So we used to tease Mira because we would be heading home from Sunday, be like, hey, what, is, what sounds good? I don't know. Hey, Chick-fil-A sounds good? She's like, yeah, Chick-fil-A sounds good. And, well, too bad. It's Sunday. So... <laughs> But every, uh, so we rest every night, we rest every week, and then every, every year, uh, like I said, we just got back from our, our vacation. Uh, unfortunately, like all of our, well, I, I say that, all of our plans that we had planned uh, fell through. I, I have a, we have an adopted sister. I say adopted, she's not technically my real sister, but she's an adopted sister uh, that comes to all the family stuff. Well, her mom passed away right before we left, and so my parents ended up staying in Sand Springs and going to that funeral, and then uh, my mother-in-law didn't feel up to going, and so uh, she got to dog sit for us all week, so I appreciate that. I have two Great Danes and a pug, and so she, she really got, uh, she, but we had a dog sitter ready to go. So we get up, to, we get up there, and as we're traveling, uh, we, we ended up canceling some of our plans, and, and we ended up just resting a lot. Uh, normally, I, I, take, I always take a book with me on vacation. How many of you guys take a book? I never read my book on vacation. Well, I read this book on vacation. And Mira is one of these people that, like, if you can't just go, 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 go. She's got to go and rest and go and rest. And so every other day, uh, me and Jennifer would go do something, and then Mira would kind of rest. But, uh, but we, we had a great time, we had, and, and we rested more than most of the time that we'd actually do on our vacation, which is really nice. The only, the only thing is uh, our room, it did not face east, but it had like, you know, some of those uh, lodges, like we were in a ski lodge, basically, a ski condo, and it had like windows, like a regular window, uh, you know, like a, like a, you know, patio door kind of thing, and it had curtains, right, but not great curtains, but it had a window above it that had nothing on it, and it was like, the sun, <laughs> at 5.30, and uh, Jennifer would get up, she would fight it till about 6.30, while I'm putting my sleep mask on, it's one of those that has like a little, a little uh, wire in the nose, so you can really crimp that thing down, and I mean, it's, it's pretty dark, I love that thing. I will, I will recommend that one. I, I've, I've tried many, many different ones. Uh, but we, uh, we, we really enjoyed our time of just getting away and resting. And, and that's one of the things that God needs, you know, he wants us to do. Uh, because he, he would command, uh, he would, uh, every seven years, there was a year of rest. You know that? So in, in the Jewish calendar, you know, you had your Sabbath day, but you also had, uh, you had all your seven feasts and, and, and the times that you took off for that. And then, uh, and then every seven years, there was a year where you rested and the land rested. And you didn't work. Like, you didn't do all that stuff. And, and God, uh, he, he would have. I, I honestly don't think they ever actually did uh, a year of rest. I, 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 you have to look back in the Bible. Uh, but if they did, it wasn't very often. You know, it wasn't that they kept this stuff up. And they never did a year of Jubilee. You know what the year of Jubilee was? So every 50 years... All the land, like if you had bought or sold land or whatever, it was supposed to revert back to the original owners every 50 years. And, and slaves would be set free. I mean, just all this, all this stuff uh, was supposed to happen in a big year of freedom. And I, I don't believe that they ever actually celebrated a year of Jubilee. It was in, it was in their, their code, and they were supposed to, but they re never really did. Uh, but uh, I did not take a break from God this week. You know, sometimes you go on vacation. Now, we didn't go to church. And, uh, uh, but, uh, but I, I listen to probably two or three sermons a day as a, just a general habit of mine, uh, more than music or more than anything else. Uh, but I didn't take a break from God, but it was a little different, you know, uh, I, I did some different, uh, Bible reading. Uh, the book I'm reading right now is, uh, Eugene Peterson, who wrote the message uh, Bible, who did translated the message and an uh, amazing, amazing book. And uh, if you don't know anything about Eugene Peterson, uh, he grew up in an assemblies of God home in uh, Montana uh, his mom was like kind of a lay preacher and uh, just an amazing. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit, all that stuff. And as he began to, to uh, feel the call of God on his life, there really wasn't a higher education in the Assemblies of God at the time. There might have been a couple of little Bible schools, like little institutes. Uh, CBC was CBI back then. And so he ended up going uh, Presbyterian, you know, which, oh, my goodness, Presbyterian. No, he loved Jesus, right? And he was saved, and he loved Jesus and everything. But really, really great book. Um, but like I said, it was a little different this week, my, my rest and, and my time with Jesus. Uh, but if we don't take time to reboot, our, bo uh, our bodies make, make time for us later. Uh, how many of you guys have ever listened to Robert Morris from Gateway Church? 
love listening to him. I listen to him every day, uh, just about. And he was talking about this. He, he had, had had a season where he just worked, 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 worked. And he was traveling, and he was writing, and he was speaking, and they were digging wells in Africa and all this stuff. And so finally, he just got to a place. He, I remember him talking about he, 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 went, he came back, and he went, and he had one pair of underwear left like to the morning he was going to work. So he goes in and he showers and he puts on his underwear and then he opens his sock drawer and there's no socks. And he was so frazzled emotionally, physically, everything that he literally sat down and cried that there were no socks. And so uh, after just kind of realizing where he was at, his church gave him a sabbatical and it was like two or three months. And he said that as he was, took the sabbatical, he literally took it like off, like didn't do anything. They did a little traveling, but a lot of resting. He said on the 54th day, he woke up that morning and he said he felt normal, just normal. And he, and he was kind of curious about it. And he starts talking to the father about it. And he was like, God, what, what is this? I feel normal. And God said, well, what day is today as far as your, you know, how, how long have you been on your, your sabbatical? And he said, well, this is day 54. And he said, you owed 54 Sabbaths. And he said, oh, I just started to repent. I'm God, I'm sorry. And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, you didn't owe me 54 Sabbaths. You owed you 54 Sabbaths. He's like, that's why you feel normal today is because you finally got to that place where you have rested like God wanted you to. And I guarantee you, if you will, if you will start following God's, follow, you know, God's prescription for health and, and for rest, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you. Uh, at my first church... Uh, that I worked at, you know, I was 25 years old, and so uh, I go there, and the guy tells me, uh, he was like, you know, you're not going to have a day off for like six or seven months, and when you're young and hungry and stupid, you know, just dumb, you think, I can do that, you know, well, about five months into it, uh, I was on the platform one Sunday morning, and we were worshiping, and I about passed out on the platform, and for that entire week, I remember I fell back into my chair, and I mean, that's just weird, right? That doesn't normally happen to you. I fell back into my chair, and all the deacons just started praying for me, you know? And so that week, we were supposed to have a revival, and, uh, and so this big, you know, this guy was coming in, and uh, I had a 104-degree fever for the next four days. I was nearly delirious. Uh, Jennifer would come home from work, just check, make sure I was still breathing, you know? And, uh, and it, was, it was just really rough. Well, what happened was literally working seven days a week for, for about five months had worn me down. And my body was like, and you're done, you know, and, and time out, right? And, and, and he was one of those, that was one of those pastors that like, you know, he, he would tell you you could take breaks and stuff like that, but then he'd make you feel like dirt if you did. And so I uh, did not work there. Very, I, was, I worked there like six months. And so I went on. But my, my second youth pastor that I was at, uh, so, and this, again, you, you learn about your body, right? You learn about your rhythms and all this stuff. And so, uh, I did have a day off. I appreciated that. I appreciated my pastor. It did take him about a month to realize when I told him I slept in till noon on my day off to not call me before noon on my day off, right? And cause I would, he would call me and I would answer that phone and I would not even pretend that I had not been asleep. I was like, hello, you know, and he was like, oh, and I'm like, dude, again, Sleeping, that's what I'm doing, right? So there had been a two-week period where we hadn't, for funerals and, and hospital visits and all this stuff, we had not had a day, I had not had a day off in two weeks. And a fellow youth pastor in town, we would get together on Fridays and we would shoot pool and, uh, and eat McDonald's. That was just what we did. Uh, one of our youth rooms had a pool, a pool table. And so uh, he was just like, dude, are you okay? I was like, I just don't know. I just I don't feel good. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, he was like, I don't know what's the matter with you, man, but I'm, I'll be praying for you, right? Well, a couple of days later, I got my day off. So I got to stay up late and, and, and sleep in. And I was okay. And I realized stre sleep is my stress reliever. That, that is what I do. I don't lift weights. I don't run. I, you know, I, I don't have any other hobby. I mean, I have some expensive hobbies like guitars and photography and stuff like that. But, uh, but, it's, but I don't do, I mean, other than guitar, I do that all the time. But um, it just took me a while to realize that, that I have to have uh, my day off to, to, to reboot. And that's, that's what it is. It's what it is for me. And so I would just encourage you, if you're a workaholic, I mean, you're working your way into an early grave is what you're doing. You're going to wear yourself out. I remember telling the pastor I worked for in Sand Springs, my first place, uh, I told him, I was like, you're going to burn me out. And he goes, life and death is in the tongue, son. Life and death is in the tongue. It's, you're just speaking that into existence. And I was like, no, you're working me seven days a week. It's not life and death is in the tongue, and that's why it's going to happen. It's like you're working me to death, you know? And I, I, 
again, I do I realize that, you know, our words are very powerful, but it's not like I was manifesting that and calling that to being in my life. It happened because I was just being worn. I was being, I was burning. I didn't just burn the candle at both ends. It was just thrown in the fire, right? That was just where it was. And so I just re- would encourage you to, to try to, to carve out some time. And, and different people re- reboot in different ways. I worked for a pastor in Bartlesville that he, he worked out. Like he would work out three or four days a week. And on Monday mornings when we all took off, five o'clock in the morning, he's heading to the Y to go work out. You know, but he would be in bed by like eight or nine o'clock like, a, like an older person. Uh, <laughs> and, and Brett, if you're watching this later, <laughs> shalom. So... He's 10 years older than I am, so used to make fun of him. But anyway, good guy. Uh, so the second thing I want to talk about is recalibrating. So you reboot, and then you recalibrate. And, and I want to go to uh, uh, Exodus chapter, I'm mean, sorry, Genesis chapter 25 is where we're going to be at. I want to talk about Jacob this morning. Uh, Jacob, as you know, in the Bible had been kind of a scallywag. And I looked that up. I actually spelled that correctly. So S-C-A-L-L-W, or L-L-Y-W-A-G, scallywag. I love that word. Uh, he had been born with his hand around his brother's heel. The word Jacob means uh, deceiver or heel grabber, somebody who's tripping somebody up, right? Uh, he was favored by his mom, but his brother was favored by his dad. That, that's an interesting. Now, I have a mother, well, I have two brothers, right? There's three of us. And my mom, when she hugs each and every one of us, she says it real quietly in our ear, each one of us, you know you're my favorite. That's what she says each and every time. And, and I say, of course I am. I know that I'm your favorite. As well I should be, I have the only grandchild. <laughs> so, to my brothers. But uh, he was favored by his mom. His, his brother was favored by his dad. Uh, his brother, if you remember, Esau, comes in from the field one time, dying of hunger. And, uh, and of course, uh, Jacob just happened to have some stew. And he sold his birthright to his brother for a bowl of stew. And what's sad is that Esau did not hold his birthright in high esteem. Genesis chapter 25, uh, verse 34, it talks, talks about that. It says, uh, it says that Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus es- excuse me, Esau despised his birthright. So that's very sad, right? It was something that was, he was born to, uh, but he just didn't, he didn't appreciate it all. Uh, he came to appreciate it later, but he didn't appreciate it right then. Uh, Jacob then conned his father. So not only so he gets the birthright you know, verbally from Esau, but he still needed his dad's blessing, right? He still needed dad to bless him. And that was just, if you look in the Bible, that's just something that, that, peop- that men of God did as they were about to pass away. They realized they were about to pass away, uh, and, uh, and, and they would, they would uh, come into their firstborn. And now the firstborn would get, so here's what, the way that it worked in, in the Old Testament times in Israel. Uh, so when, if you had two sons, you, what you would do was the, the set, first son would get twice as much as the second. So you would divide all of your stuff into however many sons you had plus one. And so if you had two sons, you would have had, divide it into a third, and the, the firstborn would get two-thirds of it, and then the secondborn would get, you know, a third. You know, that, and that's kind of the way it worked. Still fair. It still was. That was just God's economy. But Jacob needed his father's blessing, and so he conned him into it uh, because what happened was uh, him and mom got, or actually he, he needed it. Mom realized he needed it, and mom devised a plan. And so Jacob uh, was, was knew he was dying. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Isaac knew he was dying, and he was like, uh, I need to bless my son. And so he calls Esau in, and he tells Esau, he says, I want you to go out hunt some wild game, fix it just the way I like it, and then bring it to me. I will eat it, and then I will bless you. So Esau goes out. So, you know, Jacob hears this. Mom hears this. And so uh, mom said, brings uh, Jacob in, and she says, okay, here's what we're going to do. You go get two goats. You kill them. I will fix it like your father likes it because nobody can fix it like mama, right? And, uh, and then he will eat it. And he goes, how am I going to fool dad? He, he can't see. He, his eyesight's not great, but his ears are sharp, right? And it was kind of the opposite of me. And so uh, he was like, his ears are sharp. And so she said, well, here's what we'll do. We will take the goat skin and put it on your arms and your neck. How hairy was Esau if a goat skin was going to, you know, fool dad? Super hairy. I'm glad I'm not that hairy, right? I've seen some guys that are that hairy. It looks like they're wearing a shirt when they're not wearing a shirt. You know what I'm saying? And so they fix it, he goes in, and, and, he, and Jacob says, who is this? Or uh, dad says, Isaac says, who is this? And he says, well, I'm, I'm Esau, your son. And he goes, you sound like Jacob. And he's like, let me feel you. So he feels him, and he goes, okay, and he's wearing Esau's clothes. And he goes, well, you, you smell like Esau, man of the field. 
you feel like a hairy beast. You must be, you must be Esau. So he blesses him. And so after he blesses him and he leaves, then here comes Esau. And uh, Esau's like, well, where's my blessing? And Jacob's like, I'm sorry. He's like, I blessed, you know, and, and prophetically, apparently, because he was like, you know, your, your brother's going to serve you. All these people are going to serve you. And that's what happened with Jacob. So Jacob runs away, right? Genesis chapter 27, verse 41, it says, Now Esau hated Jacob. Uh, because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So Esau had some, some red-hot hate for Jacob, right? He had some red-hot hate. And, and here's the thing. So I, uh, uh, Jacob uh, ran away uh, to family who mistreated him and tricked him. And over the years, God was working on him. You know the story. So he goes to work for his uncle, I think Laban. And he wants this one daughter, and he has to work for seven years to get this, this lady. And then when it finally comes time to marry, uh, dad does an old switcheroo because he has an older daughter that, named Leah that hadn't been married yet. So they get him liquored up, and then and he doesn't know the difference on the wedding night. And then he wakes up the next morning, and he's like, who is this? And he was like, Laban, you dirty, dirty dog. You tricked me, right? And so he ended up working another seven years and got, got Rachel. Uh, and I believe that he got to marry her before that. But still... All the things that, that kind of the, the, the personality and the, the bad traits of Jacob were kind of cut, done back to him, and God changed him, right? And God, he, now, thankfully, he allowed God to change him. Sometimes people just get bitter, right? Sometimes things get, that you've done to others comes back on you, and you're like, well, I don't know why this is happening to me, and you don't really un- understand that God is you know, trying to get your attention. Uh, but Jacob, thankfully, uh, got his attention, and so he recalibrated his life. He, he got back to the way that he should have been uh, originally. Uh, and so my last word is renovate. Actually, I wanted to call it upgrade, but I was like, I want an R word, you know. And so I looked up, I, I love the Internet and I, for some things. And so I, I looked it up, and it said renovate, and I thought, that's a good word. So re- reboot, recalibrate, and renovate. So Jacob... Uh, as he should be, was still rightfully scared of his brother. He's fixing to go back home. He's fixing to take his wives, his 11 sons, and everybody, and we're all going to go back home, right? But he's afraid of his brother because the last words from, from his brother were, I'll kill you, right? That was the last words. And if, if that was ringing in my ears, I'd be like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to go home that often, you know, if somebody's going to kill me. And so, uh, but he was rightfully scared. So Jacob, uh, what he does is, is, so he starts going back and he devises a plan. He says, you know what I'm going to do? He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some gifts out there that are going. And of course, the, the, the thing that were worth anything back then was livestock, right? I mean, you know, money was, you know, kind of a new concept, you know, back then. Uh, you know, we have trust in the, the paper stuff that's in our wallets today. Uh, but what he, what he wanted to do was like, so he had like some sheep up here and he had some camels over here and he had some donkeys. And so what he would do is he had all these gifts. And so as Esau was coming to him, he would come to each of these gifts and he would be like, well, who are you? Well, well they, we are your, your, the servants of your brother, but this is a gift for you from your brother. And so all these herds, and he was hoping to soften him up as, uh, before he you know, got all the way to, to Jacob. And so what, what Jacob did was he, he sends all these guys ahead. He takes his wives and all of his sons and their servants, and they cross, uh, the, I think it's the, the, the brook of Jabbok. And, uh, and we'll read it in, in uh, so Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 32. It says this. It says, The same night he arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He then or he took them and sent them across the stream and everything he had, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until br- the breaking of day. Uh, when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. And then he said, Let me go, for the day is broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob which is deceiver or heel grabber, right? But Israel, which means you have striven with God and with men and prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, well, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the, place, uh, called the name of the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has, has been delivered. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, 
limping because of his hip. Therefore, uh, to this day, the people of Israel do not eat the sinew of the thigh that is on the hip socket because he touched the, the socket of Jacob's hip on the sinew of his thigh. Uh, so I thought that was kind of a neat homage at the end there. Um, so Jacob, he got an upgrade, got an upgrade from God. He, he renovated his life. He got a name change. That's a big deal back then. That's a huge deal. I mean, it would be kind of a big deal now. I remember when I was in second grade, this girl that we had gone to school with for like two years, her name was Catherine, and when we show up for second grade, she goes, I want to be called Amy. It's my middle name, and it's what I want to be called. And we're like, okay, that's cool. You know, it was a name change. But for, for, for Jacob, this was a big deal. He wrestled with God. It says the angel of the Lord, but you know what? Angels don't, don't birth nations and, 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 and make new destinies for people. That's not what angels do, right? That's what God does, right? So this is probably a Christophany. This is probably Jesus in the flesh wrestling with him. Uh, and and can, can, you, can you understand something? If we wrestled with God, he's going to beat us. <laughs> right? He had come down to Jacob's level and was, and was wrestling on Jacob's level, not his level, because we know that when he tried to get away, or when, you know, he was like, okay, it's daybreak, we've wrestled long enough, you know, we've gone the 12 rounds, we're ready to go, and then, so he just does a kung fu move and, on his hip socket and, like, pulls his hip out of joint, right? Uh, and this is interesting, because has anybody, a uh, show of hands, I'm just curious, has anybody ever heard the, that Jacob limped the rest of his life? Anybody ever heard that? See, I did, but that's not really in Scripture. It says that he limped then, you know, but if you got your, has anybody ever had a hip or a joint dislocated? It hurts for a while, right? It's almost like a break. It's not quite that bad, but you, you get things pop back in the socket. And so, uh, so the, this is what you would call an argument from silence as far as Scripture is concerned, that he limped at that moment, but it never talks again about him limping the rest of his life. So I just thought that was that's free, okay, completely free from, from the mind of Brent to you, you're infected with it now, and so you've got to carry it, okay? So, but he wrestled with God because angels don't change the destinies of nations. Uh, God could have easily beaten Jacob, but he came down to his level, and I just love the fact that God meets us where we're at. You don't have to get cleaned up before you come to Jesus, you know? He'll clean you up. It's not my job to clean you up either. Do you know that? It's not your job to clean somebody else up. That's the Holy Spirit's job. And last I knew, you're not the Holy Spirit. Some of you want to be. Some of you all, some of us have wanted to be the Holy Spirit, right? But our job is to go and to give the opportunity. God's job is to convict and to save. Don't try to do God's job for him, okay? You know, don't make people feel like dirt because you're going to change them maybe a little bit for a minute and then they're going to go back. But if God changes somebody, it's going to really going to change, right? And so that's, anyway, that's free. All right. Uh, God gave him a new name. He was a wrestler and a striver, or someone, we were in Oklahoma, a wrestler, you know, without a W on, a wrestler, right? A wrestler and a striver, not a deceiver anymore. Uh, do, do you realize that there is a name that God has for you that he knows you by? And it's not the name your mom and dad gave you. There's a name. And the Bible talks about in Revelation that there's going to be a day when we stand before God and it says that he's going to give us a white stone and on that white stone he has written your name that he knows you by. So I, I have many, many pet names for my, our daughter. Uh, I won't go into them, but there's a lot of them. There's, there's quite a few. Uh, just because it's just, you know how it is with your kids and stuff. If you hang around me very long, especially students, like when students would hang around me very long, they would get a nickname. And I, I never thought that, that, was, that they cared about it until one time the uh, kids were making t-shirts for camp and, uh, and they were calling me, and they were like, okay, you, you call me this. How do you spell that? Because they wanted to put their nickname that I called them on their T-shirts. And I thought that was really cool, right? I thought that was very cute and, and very touching. But there's a name that God calls you by, and I, I believe it's going to be something about you, something uh, kind of like an Indian name. You know how like the uh, Native American names really meant something? Like I remember when I was in Straight Arrows in the Assemblies of God, and I, oh, I can't remember what my, my name was in Straight Arrows, but I loved it. I, oh, man, I forget what it was. I should remember that. That's really sad that I don't. But it's kind of like that. It's gonna be, I, I believe it's going to be descriptive. And it's going to be full of love, and it's going to be full of respect, and it's just going to be the thing that God knows about you that maybe nobody else does, right? 
But I think when we hear that name, like when, when, like maybe we'll just be all new names in heaven, that I think when, when we call each other by that name, I think we're going to be like, okay, I saw that in Tracy. I do. That, man, that makes sense, right? And, and I think that'd be really cool. So I'm looking forward to that day. That's going to be really neat. Uh, but one day you will know that name, and, and like I said, I believe it's going to be the expression of your true self as God created you to be. And I, uh, one of my heroes, uh, I, I, got, I, I don't know if you call him a hero. Anyway, a guy that I've read a lot, his name's Brendan Manning. He says this, he says, uh, God loves you as you are, not as you, are, not as you should be, because none of us are as we should be. I just love that. For, for, for just kind of let yourself off the hook for just a minute. God loves you as you are. Not as you should, because none of us are as we should be. Now, we're striving, and we're trying, but at the same time, you know, we're not there yet. Uh, so Jacob was different in every way after this encounter. I mean, he walked differently for a little while. He might have walked differently for the rest of his life. Uh, I, I do believe uh, he walked differently for, for just a little while. Uh, but he was ready to ask for his brother's forgiveness for being a deceiver. And then what happened was, so whenever all of, here comes Esau, and I think he had 400 men with him. I mean, you know, it doesn't sound like that's a welcome party. Hey, we're throwing a party for you. Here's 400 guys that are armed to the teeth. Probably not, right? Uh, that would probably be pretty, pretty scary. And so, but every time that Esau would get and see like this, this herd or whatever, he would just pass by it. You know, it was like, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Finally gets to his brother, uh, and that relationship was restored, uh, and then he was, he was the father of, of a nation. Let's see, uh, let me get over to there real quick. I got my iPad open today. Let's see. Well, that's a long story. I do. It's, it's a great story, though. And so he talks about it. He said, so he's telling his servants, he says, pass on ahead of me. Uh, this is uh, chapter uh, 32, verse 16. He says, uh, pass on ahead of me and put space in between, uh, drove and drove. He instructed the first. He says, when my brother sees you and asks you, to whom do you belong? Where are you going? Uh, and who's are you? Whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, They belong to your servant Jacob. They are present to my lord Esau. And moreover, he is behind us. He likewise instructed the second and third. Okay. And so uh, Jacob meets Esau in, in chapter 33. It says, Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming and 400 men with him. So he divided his children among Leah and Rachel and the two female servants so that if somebody, some of them got killed, others would get away. I mean, this guy was scared. This guy was petrified of his brother, right? And I mean, rightfully so, understandably so. Uh, and he, uh, he himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and he kissed him and they wept. And Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and children and said, who are these with you? And Jacob said, the children whom God has gracious, graciously given your servant. And then they all draw near and, and there's just this really great, a blessing, um, he said, to find, uh, I, I, what do you mean with all this company that I met? He says, to find favor in the sight of my Lord. Uh, but Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. So he didn't even take the gifts. He's like, I don't, even, I don't even want these gifts, right? So Jacob completely changed who he was. He, he rebooted, he recalibrated, and then he, he renovated. So again, how do we reboot? Well, we rest and we dream, and we spend time with God. There, I, I, did, uh, uh, I did not have my prayer time like every day like I'm used to having. You know, kind of when, you're, you're, when your uh, habits are changed, like you, you know, you're in your normal routine. There we go. Your routine changes when you're on vacation, right? And so, uh, and so my, I hadn't prayed uh, like I normally do uh, for several days. And then finally, I was, one morning, I was just like, I'm just going to get up and do it. You know, I'm just going to get up and, and have my normal prayer time. And it was just so welcoming, like the presence of God just kind of surrounding me. And was just such, such a, I was like, oh, man, I missed this, right? And I hadn't realized I'd missed it until I got to experience it again. And so we rest, we dream, we spend time with God. So how do we recalibrate? Well, we allow ourselves, uh, allow our lives to teach and inform our decisions. You know, we, uh, <laughs> one way to get experience is to have bad decisions, right? <laughs> right? You have bad decisions, you gain experience from it, right? Well, you know, a fool will not learn from them, but somebody who's smart and somebody who, uh, will allow their lives to teach and inform decisions. Uh, a lot of times as a, as a pastor, I have mined my past to tell stories, Right? 
And so if I ever tell a story and you feel, oh, Brent, he sounds like he's totally hurting from that. Well, probably not. A lot of things that have happened to me have happened so far in the past, uh, and God has worked through those. But, but what we can do is we can mine our past to inform now and the future, right? And so hopefully you can do that as well, because there's nothing as powerful as your story. Your story is different from my story. And nobody else in this room has your story. And so when God puts you in those positions to be able to tell somebody your story and how God has touched you and done stuff in your life, man, that's powerful. That may reach them more than the Bible is ever going to reach them, you know, but that's still God working through you, okay? It's still God, right? Uh, but we allow our lives to teach and form our decisions. Uh, you know, if, if we have followed our own desires and it has ended you in a bad place, then try following God and his plan. You know, the Bible says this. He says, test me and see if I'm good. Taste and see that I'm good, right? Could you say that? Can you tell someone, I've tasted of God and he is good? I hope you can. I hope you've served God long enough. I hope you've been, that, that you have seen him be faithful. And you can say, I, I have tasted of God and he is good. Uh, and honestly, you know, give God, my, my youth pastor used to tell students, he was like, give, give God 30 days come to church Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night, you know, start reading your Bible a little bit every day. It was just like, and then in 30 days, if you do not feel differently in a good way, then you don't have to serve God, you know, and I thought that was kind of, kind of gutsy, right, kind of gutsy to say that, but, uh, but I, 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 I love the thought that, hey, taste and see that God is good, so that's how we, we uh, rent, that's how we recalibrate, now renovate this uh, we upgrade into the life that God wants us to do. New software into our old hardware, right? I'm constantly reading books about, and my favorite books are missionary biographies and pastoral biographies. They're my favorite things in the whole world. Uh, I've got books in my office I've read a dozen times, several of them, and, and, and things that just, and, and I can look through in my highlights and stuff like that. Well, I'm, I'm putting new software into this old hardware is what I'm trying to do. And, and my, my Bible reading, I was 28 years old before I had a daily Bible reading time, right? Some of you guys have beat me and done way, way better than me. Man, praise God for that. And if you haven't, I would just encourage you to, to do it and to make God part of your daily habit, right? I put my Bible in the bathroom. I know it sounds kind of gross, but, uh, you know, uh, I heard Joseph Prince preaching one time, and he, he, he told his people to put the Bible in the bathroom, and I was like, great, I'm not the only one, right? Uh, one of my students in Bartlesville said, called it my toilet Bible. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to ride that toilet Bible to heaven, right? But I made God part of my everyday. Uh, and, and when I first started out reading, I, would read, I was reading the message, and I would read like a paragraph, right? And then I, I just, just over time, God just, I just started going deeper and deeper. into Because it, it, I, I, before it's going to be a, a pleasure it's, or in a desire, it's going to be a discipline, Right? It's just the way it's going to be. So anyway, new software and our, our, our old hardware. Our, our, uh, as we were driving home, uh, I, uh, or as we were driving one of the times, and of course everything was like two hours away, so we were just kind of shooting all over Colorado. Uh, I didn't have my headphones with, up front with me, and, uh, and, which was a rookie mistake, right? And so uh, it was in my bag in the back, and Mira was asleep, and Jennifer was asleep, and I was getting a little sleepy, and I thought, man, you know, what, what can I do to kind of wake myself up here and pass the time a little bit? And I just started thinking, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to recite all the Bible verses I know. Didn't take long. And so, because the ones, now, I could paraphrase a lot. You good too. Like, we could all paraphrase this stuff. But this is what I started. I started at Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, for his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law he meditates day and night. That was the first thing I thought of. The second one was this, and I remember the day my grandmother handed me, and she, she was in her, probably her 80s, and, and she was a preacher, and, uh, but she was retired by this time, and she lived with us. And so uh, sitting down, big church, uh, but sitting down, uh, she was sitting where, where Miss Barb is sitting right now, and I was sitting on the front row. And she just taps me on the shoulder one day and, and before service started, and she just handed me this little slip of paper. And she said, I was praying, and then God gave me this verse for you. It was Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And I've looked that verse up in all kinds of different versions and everything because I love to get all the flavor out of it, that, you know, everything. And I thought of this, Psalm chapter 139, verses 23 and, 34, 23 and 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. 
see if there is any offensive way or wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And then the last one I thought of was this, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9, for my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, or my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as high as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. And, and so I just encourage you this morning, you know, I don't, I don't know how much God that you have, like, tattooed on your heart. Uh, I, I've always thought if I would get a tattoo, it would probably be scripture, but by the time I actually got it tattooed on me, I probably have it in here, and I probably don't need it on my skin, you know, or anything like that, but, and I'm not anti-tattoo at all. I'm anti-pain, <laughs> so it's probably, probably why I wouldn't do that, um, but those are the things that I had, and it actually, I, in, on my phone and on my iPad, I actually do have, uh, I have a heading under notes, and it says scriptures that mean something. There's probably two or three dozen scriptures in there, and I'll pull it out every now and again, and I just, it's just things that I, as I've been reading the Bible, like really stuck out to me, and really spoke to me, and so I'm like, I'm going to write this stuff down, but anything I can do to, for myself to, to like push the word of God further into my heart, uh, I try to do, you know, and, and again, you start small, you, you start small, um, but as a, as a Christ follower, if you guys are Christ followers here, and I think most of you guys are this morning, we're going to pray here in a minute if, if anybody would like to receive Jesus that, that hasn't or want to, to kind of reboot and kind of re-come back to him. Uh, but as a Christ follower, can I tell you that this is not the most important service of this week? I mean, it's good. It's important. But it's not probably the most important service this week. You know what the, probably the most important service is going to be this week? It's going to be Wednesday. Because we will spend about 20 or 30 minutes worshiping and then we will literally, the, anybody that has handed in a prayer request card in the last couple of weeks, we will put them out, and we will literally pray over those things. You know, Tim talked about this morning, Brother Tim, they had to go this morning, but uh, he, he talked about how they prayed over our house. Well, Barbara prayed over our house whenever we were needing to sell it. Within a week, we had a contract. And it was just the most beautiful, awesome, godly, Holy Spirit prayer, I mean, of that moment, you know. And especially because it was my need and somebody else was carrying it. Man, that meant so much to me. You know, well, we're going to come together on Wednesday, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to literally bear each other's burdens. And, w- and I've told you, whenever I get somebody's uh, request, I literally, if I have their phone number, I pull my phone out, and I, I text them. I prayed o- we, we prayed over your need tonight. And some of you guys have gotten those texts from me. You know, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. Because I mean, here's the thing, man. Like, we're, we're carrying each other. That's what we're doing, you know, you and I. And I understand if you can't get here, that's cool. It's an hour service. If you had to drive 30, 40 minutes to get here, and it's you're after working all day, completely understand that. But, and, you know, Brother Gary says, challenges us to, hey, if you're going to be at home, then, then spend that hour praying. You know, spend that hour. And if you want me to text you some needs, I will. There's uh, actually uh, Wilma Sexton, uh, your mama, text me, and she, she said, I'm not going to be able to be there for a little while because of the storm damage and stuff to my house and everything. But she goes, I want you to text me needs every week. So she wants me to go back, and, and, and so I, I do. I, shoot, I find a couple of them, and I'll shoot a picture of it, and I'll send it to her, right? So you can, you can still be part of, a part of this, but I'm telling you, um, th- that's probably the more important. Uh, now, if you're not saved, today's the most important thing. If you don't know Jesus, today's the most important, because this is your moment of decision. You don't know if you have the next week or not. You don't. A lot of us want to think that we're going to be 80 years old and, and full of life and die in a hospital that, that, you know, and see it coming. That don't happen. Not every grave is six foot long at the cemetery, right? Not, a, not all the, the numbers on are big numbers, you know, when you add them up. They're, they're not all big numbers there, right? So let's pray this morning. Head bowed and eye closed, please. And the reason we do that is we don't, one, one, I want you to pray. One, I want you to be praying for the people that, that maybe need to make a decision for Christ. But two, also, we just don't want to be distracting at all. And, and so if you'd say to me this morning, Brent, I, I need to reboot my life. I need to, I need to come, either come back to Jesus or I need to come to him for the first time. And I'm going to pray a real simple prayer with you, and we're not going to call you out. I'm not going to make you stand up or anything like that. Um, but if you just say, Brent, that's me, I just, I just want you to raise your hand. This morning, you're like, I just need to reboot my life. I need to come back to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I see that. Two hands so far. Anybody else this morning? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's super simple, guys. There's, there, there's, not, a, there's not a sinner's prayer in the Bible, and I think because we would worship that, those words, but it's just simply just saying, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. 
I ask that your blood would cover me, that it would, not just cover, the blood of Jesus washes away. So Jesus, I ask that you would wash away all my sins. God, I, I, I want to come back to you fresh and new. And Father, that's my prayer for every one of us here this morning. So if you raise your hand, just say, those, say that to, to God in your own words. Just God, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. Let your blood just wash away all my sins this morning. I'm a new creation in you. Help me to live for you. And, and, and this morning, if you, if you need to kind of recalibrate, you need to kind of, you need to allow the things, maybe you made some decisions in the place that you're at in this life, you're just like, I don't think this is where God wanted me to be. You know, I've made some, some, some horrible decisions this morning. But you just want to come back to God and you just want to say, God, I just want to recalibrate my life. I want to find where true north is again. I want to, I want to point at the cross. And so, God, I just pray for every person that would say this morning that, God, I just need to come back and I need to, I need to get more firmly on the path. I'm following you, but maybe I've strayed to the right or to the left again. But, God, just center me again and center me facing, uh, facing the cross of Jesus, facing uh, the destiny that you have uh, for each and every person that's here to this morning, Father, allow our, our mistakes to, to be, let us learn the lesson and forget the pain. And that's a hard thing to do, God. And, but, but one thing I do, Father, I know that whenever, uh, I, in the past, whenever sins have come back to my heart and my mind that I've remembered that I've done, even though I know they're forgiven, God, they still cause me pain. And so, Father, what I pray in those moments is not forgiveness again, because again, they're forgiven, but what I pray is wholeness, Lord that you would make me whole again, that you would bring back, uh, that you would mend the broken places in my life. And God, if I have left pieces of myself out there, God, that you would, you would re restore those pieces back into my life so I can be whole and, and, and not be hurting anymore. And so, Father, if there's a person in here this morning that needs to, needs to hear that, God, let them, let them know that they are forgiven. From the very moment that they repented, they're forgiven. But God, we're, we're broken a lot of those places are still broken. So, Father, I pray that they would ask for your wholeness and your, your healing, your inner healing, Father, I pray. And then this morning, if, if you just say, God, you just want to go deeper in Jesus. And that, that's all of us. You know, I'm not going to call us up here. <laughs> That'd be one of those altar calls where everybody should come up, and I'm not going to do that. But, but just sitting in your seats, and you're like, God, I just want to go deeper into you. You know, and, and, and maybe there's something that God wants you to. Maybe, maybe he wants you to, to up your, your Bible reading time. Maybe he wants you to take a little more prayer time. Maybe he wants you to turn your radio off while you're, while you're driving from job to job or from home to work and back, and he just wants you to spend time with him. Maybe, maybe he wants you to pray in the Holy Spirit as you're driving. That's one thing that I do a, a lot is I'll just turn the radio off and I'll just spend 10 or 15 minutes just praying in the Holy Spirit. I'll drive by people's houses, God, and I, and I just, I just I, I, I shoot a, a prayer out for them. God, I just pray that you would help us, God, to... to to install some new software into our hardware, Father, so we can run faster and we can do things better, Lord. Because I know there are many saints in here this morning, God, that are, that, that are just hungry for more of you. And, and for us to get more of you, I believe that we just have to make more room for you. We just have to kind of open ourselves up and, and, and give you some time and some place to be able to speak to us, Father. And so, God, I just pray a blessing over this church this morning. I thank you for these, the, these uh, souls, God, that have, have recommitted themselves this morning. They've rebooted and they've recommitted them, your, themselves to you. God, I just pray a blessing over them this week, Father. I pray that you would walk with them, God, that you would, you would be tangible. God, in the middle of the night, uh, that they would wake and they would feel your presence, God. That, that they would just feel a difference this week because of, of the, this new decision, this fresh decision. Uh, to just re-solidify their, their, uh, their salvation and their, their, their hold on you and your hold on them, God. And I, I just praise you and I thank you for this church. I, I just ask God for, bless uh, Pastor Gary and Miss Shirley as they travel this week and, and all of our family and friends that are, uh, have had surgeries and, and the different things that they're doing, God, we just pray a blessing over them and we just pray that you would bring us all back together in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Thanks for being here.